Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We're going to look at verse, verses 30 through 35. Luke 24, 30 to 35. The title of the message is, Don't Let the Fire Die. Don't Let the Fire Die. Luke chapter 24, verses 30 through 35. Luke 24, verse 30. And he came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Brother Dick, can you pray for the message? Thank you once again for allowing us to gather together, brothers and sisters in Christ, to come worship you, and to listen to your word. Lord, we ask you that you'll fill each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to be distracted. Protect us from devil's attacks. And especially, Lord God, please be with Pastor Jay as he preaches your word unto yes, us. Sir. Give him liberty and the freedom and the anointing from on high, Lord God, so that he can deliver your word unto us that we need. We ask you that you'll be with those uh, who are going through different trials. We ask you that you'll be with them, strengthen them, encourage them, Lord God, and help them to look unto you to continue the race. We thank you for all the things you have done for us and will continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Don't let the fire die. If you don't keep the fire going, it will eventually die. The Bible says, Lord is our consuming fire. However, as Christians, you need to keep your fire burning. It is critical that you realize that each day, I need to keep that fire going. When you go camping, and if those who love camping, one of the things that you have to do is start fire, and especially if they allow it. Especially at nighttime, it gets cold, you need fire. And sometimes starting fire is one of the hardest things to do, especially if weather's you know wet, you know if there's been a rain, and if you don't have you know fire starter, if you don't have those you know oils for a fire starter, and if you don't have you know good conductors, if there are no you know tinders around, you know it gets it gets tough. However, once you start, and then you let it go, and let it burn. It could burn for hours. It could burn all night. As long as you have the resources, as long as you have the firewood or whatnot. The important thing is that you have to start and you have to let that fire burn. For some, you know, it's been only a few weeks, maybe a couple weeks since the summer camp. The fire should continue to burn within you. But unfortunately, maybe might have died out already for some people. Only two weeks. Sometimes we have a great you know, revival within yourselves, right? Through summer camp, through Jubilee, through just uh, meetings in general. And it's sad to see, even looking at myself, when you had that fire for the Lord, suddenly it just deems little by little, and then it just burns out. The hardest thing about fire is that, especially when you are out there trying to start fire, it's hard to restart it. It takes time to restart. If there's still you know, remnants of you know, firewood still burning, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier, even if it's like a really dim, right? 
if you're the fact that you're still you know in the ministry you're sitting where you are you're listening where you are there's some fire still burning in your life if you didn't care for it if you wanted to let the fire die you don't be here you don't be listening but the fact that there's something inside of you that wants to burn and keep it burning is a good sign Amen. what did you do this morning today Oh, brethren, and anybody who's listening, what did you do? What's the first thing did you do today? Did you brush your teeth? Right? Did you use the bathroom? Uh, did you read your Bible? Uh, what did you do? Did you give water to the flowers? Right? Did you walk your dog out? Or what's the first thing that did you do today? First thing that, and I reiterate, that we should be doing is spending time with the Lord and ask to be filled with the Holy Ghost so that our day will be filled with the Holy Ghost, so that your day will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's something that's very, how should I say, cliche, because I talk about it millions of times, something that you hear millions of times. But however, the reason that I talk about it many times, the reason you hear it many, many times is because it's something that we lack. If we don't talk about it on a daily basis, we forget. And we are a very, very, I guess we're a creature of forgetting things very easily. Yes. I mean, as you age, especially, and I don't know about the young ones, I'm pretty sure, you know, people my age, right, can kind of relate to, right? All right, people sitting in the back smiling, you know, young ladies and young men over there. You know? Like, okay, I was supposed to bring this today, and then I don't see it, right? You're driving, whether it's to work, whether it's to church, any destination, like, okay. And then it suddenly dawns on you, oh, yeah, you know, where's, where's this item? Where's that item? And then you know, oh man, I forgot. And a lot of times you can't really go back in time or you can't go back because either you're gonna miss work, you're gonna miss church, you're gonna miss school or whatnot. If you don't get constantly reminded, I mean, you forget. Even if you're reminded the day before, night before, you still forget. I mean, that's how forgetful we are. Then you're telling me that you know, if you don't pray to the Lord in the morning and you don't ask the Lord to be filled with the Holy Ghost, that you're going to go your days and everything's going to be okay, you know, hunky-dory, and you're going to live a you know, spirit-filled life? No. You think your fire will be burning throughout the day, you know, without being filled with the Holy Ghost? No, no way. Let's turn our Bible to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, probably a verse that everyone should have memorized by now. Ephesians 5, verse 18. It's a direct command. You know, it's imperative. I mean, it's Lord's command. You know, in this spiritual warfare that you and I are living in, you know, we have to be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5, verse 18, Bible says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. I mean, are you filled with the Spirit? You have to ask. But it's something that you have to ask the Lord. You, know? you have to ask. Lord, I, want to be, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today. You know, please fill me with the Holy Ghost. That's why a lot of preachers, right? Or before they preach or when someone's praying before preaching, they ask preachers to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because you have to be. You know, because if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, what, what's the opposite, right? Yeah. You've got to be filled with things of the world, right. things of the devil, and things of the flesh. Not good. Not good. You know, let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. That's why it is one of the, I guess, most important requirements for you to not let your fire die is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let the fire keep on burning, right? 
I mean, when you're singing hymns, when you're praising the Lord, you know, at the summer camp, you run the aisles, you go up and down, you jump, you, know, you throw the bases, you do everything, right? Not that you do it here, but it's the same fire living inside of you. Is your heart still running the bases, praising God? Is your heart still, you know, giving high five to each other in the heart, right? I mean, even with the eye contact, you know, it was, what, the funny thing is that when Brother Nathan uh, and Brother Robert, you know, especially them two, you know, wild guys, and they're, they're you know, praising the Lord, sometimes I, I seem like, you know, they don't even have to talk. They just look at each other, give eye contact, and they're suddenly together. And they're suddenly praying together, they're suddenly running together, and they're just, you know, praising the Lord together. So do you, do you still have that fire burning? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that, they, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. See, can you see? It's not fruits. It's the whole thing. The fruit. You know, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you should bear fruit of the Spirit. The whole thing. It's not just about, you know, love. We all want to share love. We want to, wanna, right, be lovely. But, I mean, the Bible says it's a fruit. It's the fruit. I mean, if, are you producing all this fruit? Do you have love? Do you have joy? Do you have peace? Do you have long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance? Against it, there is no law. So it's not just one fruit that you're bearing. This one fruit contains all of this. That's why you have to keep the fire burning. And if you're like, okay, I don't know, then go to Galatians chapter 5 and start looking at the verses. Look at, let's go to verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Hence, you could see, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, and if you're not living a spirit for your life, most likely, or should I say, you know, you are committing this. Look at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And these are some of the, you know, very wicked, wicked, wicked sins. Adultery, fornication, which means these are going on not just outside secular world, it's going on within the Bible-believing church. You know, people don't want to talk about it. People are kind of weary about this stuff. But you, you just say what the Bible says. And then there's a reason why they're the, one of the first two stats mentioned. Like a lot of other sins, you just commit on your own. However, when it comes to adultery and fornication, it's not just you. You're committing it with someone else. And you're completely and definitely defiling the Holy Ghost and Holy Temple of God if you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, which is you. Then we continue. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and a lot of this lustful, dirty sins, right? Idolatry, witchcraft. I, you know, it's like witchcraft, right? It, you, you really have to watch what you watch. Yes. I mean, yeah, young people, old people, in the middle, everybody. Because sometimes you get too deep into things outside of the Word of God. Just stay in the Word of God. Amen. It's like you're, you're burning fire. You know, good material for burning fire is what? Wood, right? But you start bringing tires. Do you know how smelly it is when you start burning tire? Try to eat, 
eat your marshmallow with the burnt tire, you know, smell on it. Why do you have to do it? I mean, as, as a Bible believer, you have so many resources available already. Right? YouTube channel, right? You know, we have our YouTube channel. And there's so many material there. Discipleship, all the Bible study, commentaries, you know, many, many preachings. But because you're so interested in, like, witchcraft, this dark stuff, you go outside of the Bible, you start reading literatures, you know, written by people who experience certain things. No good thing's going to come out of it. So stay away. Don't let that fire burn with, you know, stuff that you shouldn't burn it with. Because it's going to leave a mark. Before you know it, you're like, oh, you know. And I was studying about, you know, satanic church. You know, there's more to it than what the Bible says. You know, you want to hang out and study? I mean, but unfortunately, there's going to be someone who's like, yeah, man, I want to learn more about Satanists. You know, I want to learn about their rituals, you know. I want to, you know, maybe even you know, be a spy in one of those churches and go in there and then experience. No, you stay away. But you could fall deep into it. That's why you have to be careful. Like what kind of material you put in to the fire that's burning inside of you. If you're constantly, that's why there's a lot of people out there who have zeal. Zeal to serve their God, but in a wrong way. Yeah. Right? I mean, we have people out there standing in the corners almost 24-7 trying to meet their quota by works, yes. not believing that there's literal hell. And they think it's doing something for the Lord. They live a very clean life. I mean, a few of my best friends at work, they were all part of it. But the unfortunate thing is that you'll still go to hell doing the best that you can do yes. for that kind of religion. That's why you have to make sure, especially after you got saved, you keep your fire burning with the right materials. Because once you bring in those tires, once you bring in all those you know, unnecessary materials, what happens? Yeah, you got to be polluted. And the things that you eat will be polluted. You know, when you were camping, well, what's one of the best experience? Eating good meat, right? Burned on a you know, firewood, wood grill. Hey, it tastes really good if you do it the right way. Again, you know, because it's kind of extreme. Imagine if you are burning your steak, like ribeye steak, you know, with a tire, remnants of tire. How do you think it's going to taste like? Right? Don't go try it, OK? Maybe we will, you know, for if we all go on a camping trip or something. I have, like, Brother Nathan, since his birthday, let him try. And then let us know, Sister Nadia and you know, Caleb's future wife, you know, Sister Seungmin, you know, birthday people, hey, try your steak, you know, rubber tire steak. Probably you wouldn't even feel a difference than the real rubber. Probably you could eat the rubber and you could eat the steak, probably taste similar. But that's how deeply some of, you know, brethren, Bible believers, you know, get into those things, right? As some, you know, some, some people came to our church because of, you know, conspiracy theories, right? You know, you can stop there. So God, God used it that, that much and then you came and then that's it. There's no reason to continue on it, right? It's like you're eating rotten tuna and then you thought it felt good, but someone told you that's rotten, don't eat it. Why do you want to go back and eat it again? And then go to bathroom left and right. But it tastes so good. But it doesn't. Your body doesn't like it. You know, like the Spirit says, I mean, the Bible says in verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit. So the flesh, flesh things that flesh like, right? Spirit's going to say no. 
That's why it makes no sense that when it comes to so-called Christian music, you think that's really praising God? I mean, using the worldly beats, right? Rock and roll, hip hop, even all those rap and everything. Junk. Just drop the lyrics. How does it sound like? Junk. It sounds just like the worldly music. Yes. That's why you know, nothing, a lot of things don't really get me much, but that music really gets to me. Like those, you know, bass, deep sounds, and those rock and roll with heavy metal and drum. Because my spirit hates it. Yeah. The Holy Spirit within me is like hating it. Right? If you don't have that kind of feeling when you're listening to worldly music, you know, you're, you're literally backslidden to the point uh, you know, your conscience is like seared with hot iron. Like you can't even feel it, right? Lord has to like break that fallow ground, right? Now how can you say you're a Bible believer or even just a Christian saying those music is okay to listen to when the Bible outright says spirit is against that, those type of things? They're contrary the one to the other. It's like oil and water, right? They cannot mix. You think those things are going to help you become a better Christian? It's not. Then you have to get rid of it. It's part of a wrong resource and materials that you're using to burn that fire. And you're no different than all those people who's trying to serve the Lord blindly, unknowingly or knowingly in the wrong way. Can you say, I went to a great Christian concert. We're jumping up and down, and everybody's just, you know, being very flashy, as in hugging each other, kissing each other, but we all did it for the love of Christ. <laughs> and you know what? We wanted to go further. So people were passing around, you know, some stuff to, you know, put it in our mouth, right? Huff, huff. And man, when that amazing grace was playing, I felt like I was so close to the Lord. <laughs> Literally, I felt like I was in heaven. That's the devil. Think about it. I mean, what kind of, you know, what, what are you feeding inside? What kind of fire is that burning? That's definitely not a good fire that's burning. Yes, amen. That's a wicked fire that's burning. Amen. But one thing, one thing about the fire is, though, it's very contagious. Unfortunately, there are many you know, wildfires going on in the state, right? And when it gets out of control, it's impossible to contain. And then it would just destroy tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of acres, just like that. When you let that fire burning and you start using the wrong things, you start burning it with fleshly things, what's going to happen? Man, it's gonna burn everything around you. It's gotta be contagious. When you know, especially going to the music part, when you know you shouldn't be listening to those wicked music, and you continue to listen to it, what happens? It affects rest of your life. You become adulterer, you become fornicator, you become unclean, and lasciviousness. I, I, you guys go study the word lasciviousness, man. It's, so, it's a wicked word. Like, it's dirty for me to like, utter from the pulpit. I mean, like, with the things that's involved. I mean, wickedly, wicked sins, you know, lustful sins. What do you think those things will try to make you do when you listen to those things? What's the purpose? What's the, what's the purpose of the devil? He wants to become super carnal, very carnal. That's why when you're not you know, keeping the good fire burning, when you let the bad fire burn and let the good fire die, what's going to happen? It's got to be contagious everywhere, right? 
all bets are off. And then you try to justify it, justify things. You know what? I don't call it adultery or fornication. I just call it two people, you know, loving each other. It's okay. You might say unclean, you might say it's lasciviousness, but to both of us, it's uh, holy love, right? You might say it's idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, but it's just our feelings, you know? Respect our feelings, right? You get to such a low level and look at 21, envyings, easy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. All these things you start producing. Uh, it's, it's burning. Wow, I mean, your fire is burning. Instead of seeing love, joy, you know, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. So one thing about fire is what? When it burns, it's going to show. You know, you can't hide from the fire. That's why when you go camping, around the fire pit, you could see things. You could see things. You could see people's face. You could see your marshmallow. You could actually see something. And then you could see everything that's burning around. Man, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you're fire up the Lord, you're fire up for the Lord, man, we're gonna see this fruit of the Spirit around you. Man, that's, that'll be a great sight, encouraging sight. Man, but for some, or for many, all we're going to see is the works of the flesh. Man. Even if you want to see far away, because the fire's burning, you and I could see it. If you and I could see it, other people could see it. If you and I and other people could see it, that means maybe more than you know already know about it. Man, that fire has been burning for a while. But you don't even realize it? Or are you not going to do anything about it? If that fire is going to start, wildfire that you cannot contain for a long time, then what's going to happen? It's going to just ruin you. You have to put it out. Bring that water bucket, and you got to start putting it out. Spiritually speaking, you got to get right with the Lord. I mean, you got to start going to the Lord on your knees in prayer and start, even if you don't remember, like you and I forget a lot. So start asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, help me to remember those sins that I committed so that I could get right with you. You know, I want to get cleaner. I want to become pure. I want to start the fire, whatever the pure fire that's burning inside of me, I want to let it grow with the pure stuff instead of wicked, fleshly things. And when you start fire, if, you're, if your fire wants to burn well, you got to give some room, right? Oxygen has to go through. And if you want that fire inside of it to keep on burning, you need to give a good oxygen, right? You got to give it the Word of God, you got to give it the preachings. You got to give it the working in the ministry. You got to give it, you know, witnessing to lost souls out there. Right? You got to keep, keep it open. For some, your fire is dying because you're closed. There's no oxygen to go through. Like, I'm not saying you need to. I, actually, I'm. You don't share everything that's going on in your life. That's hard too. But however, if there are certain things that you need counsel upon, there are certain things that you need advice upon before you make the wrong choice, before you, you know, put that wrong firewood in there, before you put in that tire in there, after you pray about it, if it's not clear in the Word of God, you have to talk to someone. You have to talk to your pastor, you know, your leader, your parents, young ones. You have to talk about it. It's always better to talk about it, get it right, before you committing it 
with uncertainties involved. Like for example, dating, right? Don't, don't expect the you know, Lord to show you in a dream that you're going to marry this person. So that's, 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 it doesn't work like that, right? But there's a Bible believer, like, you know, faithful one, and you like her, you like him, and stuff. But there are certain questions that you have when it comes to relationship. Then stop there, and you have to ask before you make your next move. Because that next move could be the works of flesh. When it's works of the flesh, then you're going to reap what you sow. Then that fire, that tire, you have to wait until it burns, completely burns. Then how long and how much pain and trouble do you think you're going to go through until that thing burns? You have to smell it. You have to smell the fire of the rubber. I mean, yeah, you have to smell the rubber continuously until it burns all the way. Then what's going to happen? Then with that, you, you're, I, we don't even have to look further. All the works of the flesh will be your fruit, guarantee. Because once you start, with, start the fire with the tire, what do you think? Everything component of tire will burn. And all the components of the flesh will burn. And it's going to show. And it's going to give its ugly smell. Not to you only, but everybody around. That's why when you do camping, if you're a first timer, if you're a newbie, novice, beginner, what do you do? You ask someone, right? Hey, what's the best way to start the fire? Right? And you, but you need to ask the right person. Don't just go to anybody, right? Who's another newbie, another beginner? Right? Hey, how do you start the fire? You know what? First pour the water inside the fire pit so that there will be no remnants of fire from two weeks ago. And put the firewood in and you start the fire. Uh, you, it's not going to start for a long, long time. Right? But you have a more experienced People who went through the same thing, where you know that their counsel will be good, then you go and ask. I think one of the things that you know, some of the Christians lack is seeking help, asking for advice, and asking for counsel. And a lot of times that happens because of your pride, because you feel like you look weak. Right? When the fire's dying, and you need that fire to keep burn, you need to ask for some help if you can't let it continue on your own. And if you, there's a right people to ask, like if you're at a campsite seven, if there is someone at campsite eight, go ask. Hey, can, you, can we borrow some firewood? And especially if they're your family or brethren, or someone you know, your friends, you will have no hesitation. Hey, John, can I get some fire? You know, hey, Jimmy, can I get some fire? Right? They'll be like, yeah, hey, go ahead. You know, hey, let me show you how to set it up. You know, dig some, dig some. You know, so that you have some trenches. You know, have some oxygen going through it so that it will, it will burn better. And you're like, oh, thank you. Right? But sometimes you try to do it on your own. You go to the trash can, take some trash, you know, leftover food, right? Hey, a leftover pizza box, leftover pizza, leftover all this, you know, you know, Chinese food seems like the best way to start the fire or continue the fire. And then you put it in there and then you start smelling weird stuff. Man, it smells so bad. It smells so bad. And like, I wish I didn't have to do that, right? A lot of Christians, you know, who's listening to this message, you're, in, you're on that boat right now. They're like, man, should I go to the right? Should I go to the left? You're praying, you're listening to preachings, and there's, you know, word of God. You still don't know what to do. Instead of flipping a coin and be like, okay, I'm going to go to this way if it's, you know, heads, I'm going to go to this way if it's tails. 
Ask for some counsels. You know, pastors, they're there for you so that you can make a better decision. A lot of times, just like young men, young college kids, people in their 20s and high schoolers where they think they own the whole world, like, you know, I could do anything. But parents say, don't do it. Do it this way. It's from the experience. Years later, they reminisce. They're like, oh, yeah. I should have done what my dad told me. I should have done what my mom told me because they went through the same thing. It comes to a point where it's good that you have fire continuously burning. You have to. You, you don't let it die. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and start looking at it. Man, am I feeding my works of flesh to my fire? Or am I actually just feeding fruit of the Spirit? And as you examine your life more and more and more, and as you get closer to the Lord, and as you truly think about that fire that's burning, then you're like, oh, wow. There are certain things that I need to change. There are certain things that I need to get right with the Lord. You know what? I've been feeding and I've been smelling this rubber tire burning the whole time. Okay, that's enough, man. That polluted my lung for a long, long time. I want to cleanse it out. Amen. Then when you start reading Galatians chapter 5, you know, where it says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You're like, okay. I'm not feeding my flesh anymore, and I'm feeding the spirit. Man, you know, when you're burned, fired up for the Lord and continuously, you know, burning with the right fire through the spirit, man, it shines. It shines like, it shines gloriously. You know, that's where people who need the Lord Jesus Christ can see. Yeah. And they're going to follow that light. I mean, if I was the ER, the light of the world, right? And then they go, oh, wow. And then they come, and some people will get saved. Some people will at least hear the gospel. Yeah. However, man, your, your fire is that smoky fire, and it smells, and you want to stay away from. People aren't going to be drawn to your fire. They're going to stay away. They're going to drive away. <laughs> then what's going to happen? You have done nothing for the Lord. Because you, your work, everything will go through a fire and will be judged. And that what's left and what's left for the Lord and what you've done for the Lord will endure. Hay, stubble, you know, wood, all those will just burn up. Then you have nothing left. That's why when I say don't let the fire die. Don't let the good fire die. Grow it. Let the fleshly fire die for a change. Put it out with the Word of God, with prayer, strong convicting preachings. Put it out. Bring the water. Put it out. If you need some counsel, help someone to carry that water with you. Put it out together. Then, you and I will be full of the spirit of fruit of the spirit. Isn't that what you want in your yeah. Christian walk with the Lord? Yeah. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the fruit of the spirit. Let's pray. Dear Father, sometimes we think that the fire that's burning is a good fire, but we just neglect the word of God, your word, prayer, and we just go about it, but it's polluting not only ourselves, but people around us. Heavenly Father, I pray that we'll get right with you, Lord, and especially the fire that's burning. Pray that, Lord God, we'll be filled with the Holy Ghost, and we'll have that fruit of the Spirit, Lord, just producing and burning, Lord God. Help us to be away with the works of the flesh, Lord. That's just polluting, smelly, very wicked, burning, Lord God. 
but it, is, it continues to burn in many of our lives, Lord. Lord, help us to put it out, Lord. And we pray for Pastor Shrive, Lord God, be with him and heal him, Lord, according to your will. And also, Lord, be with Sister Terry and the family as well. Pray that through this, uh, souls will get saved, Lord, and comfort them, Lord. And Lord God, bless rest of the day and everything and help us to continuously live for you and looking unto you, Lord. And even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.